I'm currently working on this LED bar and I ran into, let's say, a problem. Up here I wanted to use my WS2801 LED strip to play some different animations which I want to cycle through with a push button and it would get a separate microcontroller than this LED matrix I'm currently making. That means I need two outputs of the microcontroller for the LED strip and one input for the push button. It would be a total waste to use an Atmega328 which you can find on the Arduino Uno because one of those costs around 4 bucks. A smaller, more affordable microcontroller is this 80 tiny 85 It costs around 1 buck, has 5 IOs, so definitely enough for me, and 8 kilobytes of flash memory, which should give me enough space for some animations. Of course you cannot just plug this IC in the Arduino Uno and program it, but I'm going to show you how to program this microcontroller using the Arduino software and an Arduino Uno as a programmer. At first we have to download and install the Arduino software. Head over to arduino.cc and download the version 1.0.5 and install it. It does not work with the new 1.55 beta. I already tried that. Now we have to download the board data for the ATtiny. You can download those from the link in the description. Here I'm downloading it from the original source, hilotech.org. Those guys made a great tutorial about this. Now I extract the zip archive and copy the ATtiny folder into the Arduino slash hardware slash Arduino folder. After starting up the Arduino software, you should see some new boards. Now we need to upload this Arduino ISP sketch to the Atmega328, which you can find in the example section. Now let's take a look at the 80 tiny 85 ic Pin 4 is ground. Pin 8 is VCC. Our 5 IOs are pin 2, 3, 5, 6 and 7 of the IC. The IO numbering I'm showing here is important for the Arduino code later. IO 2, 3 and 4 can also be used as analog inputs and IO 0 and 1 can produce a PWM signal. Don't know what PWM is? Check out my other video. And our pin 1 of the IC is reset. The wiring of the Arduino is simple. Arduino pin 13 to 80 tiny IO2, pin 12 to IO1, pin 11 to IO0, pin 10 to 80 tiny reset pin 1, 5 volts goes to 80 tiny pin 8 aka VCC and ground of the Arduino to ground of the 80 tiny aka pin 4. And don't forget to put a 10 microfarad capacitor between the reset pin of the Arduino and ground. I wrote this little blink sketch for an LED on IO3 of the AT Tiny. Now I have to select the Arduino ISP as programmer and AT Tiny 85 with a clock of 1 MHz as the board. And upload. There might appear some error messages about Peggle, but don't worry, it still worked. Okay, that is pretty cool, but I think, I think that I can do better. How about an 80 tiny programming shield? I put the mail headers in the Arduino and try to fit them into the PCB. But the space between those two headers is too big. It won't fit in the PCB this way. Well, I can't connect those. But in fact, we don't really need those pins, so it doesn't matter anyway. I cut my PCB to a nice size and soldered my mail headers to the PCB. Afterwards, I soldered my IC socket in place and just like before, I connected the Arduino pins to the socket pins, but this time with bridge wire. At the end, I made some interruptions in the Cooper traces and added some female header pins for easy connecting. And done! And it seems like everything still works fine. Now I don't have to worry about wiring up the AT Tiny correctly when programming. Another disadvantage of the AT Tiny is 
that you cannot use all the functions of an Arduino. For example SPI, which is necessary for my WS2801 LED strip. But thankfully somebody from SparkFun bitbanged the SPI protocol. So I don't have to think about that by myself. Bitbanging basically means to emulate the protocol. In this case SPI. I have to say that I'm not done with this upper part. This is just a test that it is possible to use the AT Tiny with the WS2801. You will see more about this project in the near future. Thanks for watching, stay creative, and I will see you next time.